Welcome to another episode of Masonic Curities. I am joined again here today by Right Worshipful Michael Leonard, the District Deputy Grand Master of the 23rd Masonic District here in Massachusetts, as well as a past master of Trinity Lodge, founded in 1778. And today, both Michael and I will do a quick presentation on two very early pieces of Trinity Lodge that was miraculously saved over the years. Right Worshipful? Thank you, Keith. Yep, so here we have our, our silversmith jewels from James Wattell from 1784, 1785. He was the secretary of the lodge. Um, as Keith and I were discussing, some of these jewels really don't depict the modern jewels of what we have today of the stewards and senior, senior and junior deacons. Um, the senior and junior deacon, as we know, is the, 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 moon, the moon and sun. Uh, we believe that these two jewels at the top may have been the deacon's jewels, as well as the ones on the bottom may have been the steward's jewels. Uh, but as we were talking, it's not so much that we could have gone back to in the 1780s. Uh, obviously, we didn't have Google back then, so we couldn't just look up what the jewels should look like. Uh, so this might have been a depiction of, of Brother Botel's uh, kind of thought process of what the jewels should be. Uh, we also talked about some of the ones that were probably added later on, uh, that we, they weren't depicted as a, as, a, as a lodge officer at the time, but might have been added later on. Uh, we see the quills on the pen, which were our secretary, and we believe that this probably was the treasure of the cross swords as he protected our, all our stock and other properties of the lodge. Um, a Tyler's sword, we believe, didn't have a marshal back then, uh, so we believe this might have been added later. We do have an older style baton, which again was probably added later from the archives that were found uh, from the previous law, uh, when we moved. Uh, so, do we want to talk about the carpet? Do uh, you want to give a date right away? So, we believe that this was presented to us in 1784 by a brother. There is another master's carpet that we believe was also presented. That is currently residing at the uh, museum at Lexington, at the Scottish Rite Museum. This was one of those paintings that came along with it. This is starting to show its age a little bit, but uh, it is a beautiful piece. We still use it in our degree work. Um, and it's one of our, our greatest assets that, that shows that we've been around for quite some time with the jewels that are dated back to 1784 and as well as the painting that's dated back to 1784 as well as the one that matches it, well, it doesn't match it, but like it in the Scottish Rite Museum. Uh, one of the great things about Trinity Lodge is when they closed in the uh, uh, 1830s because of the anti-Masonic era, uh, they were meeting then in South Lancaster uh, above a general store. The store was actually owned by one of the members, John Thurston. Thurston. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And he was nice enough when the lodge closed. You know, when these lodge closed or they, they folded, a lot of the stuff was just left. Uh, the Masons didn't know what to do with it. It was hard times for the Masons. They didn't want to, you know, hold on to the stuff. Um, John was nice enough, my brother John was nice enough to, to leave the stuff as is as the history of Trinity Lodge states in the book that uh, when the lodge was reformed, they went to John Thurston's house, uh, store and the stuff was still sitting there 30 something years after the lodge had closed. So that's kind of miraculous that these items were there. And this case here shows all of the early items of Trinity Lodge, something you do not see in Masonic Lodge, not even in Paul Revere Lodges. It, this is just magnificent. I always love this case. First of all, the door knockers have got to be from pre-1820s. The early jewels. Uh, right Worshipful Lenin mentioned the cross swords. Again, there wasn't any standard sheet to go by. This is what a Masonic jewel looks like. We today go by the cross keys. Cross keys means silence, or key means silence. Swords means security. Now some of you might think that's the inside sentinel or the inner guard as some jurisdictions have. Eh, wrong. Inside sentinel was not an officer until after the anti-Masonic era. Not all officers that we use today were officers in those days. Of course, there wasn't an organist. <laughs> Mason sang. Yeah. Though we did have a Tyler, but I don't know why that's different. Marshall was quite of an iffy. A lot of times there was a senior deacon that did the Marshall's work. Now, the great thing also about Trinity is we do have, as the right worship mentioned, 
this master's carpet. We only know from the era. This is the oldest master's carpet that I know to exist here in the state of Massachusetts. And if I am wrong, I hope someone please let me know by either sending a comment to our YouTube, our Facebook, or to our email. But if it does date to the 18, 1780s, it is one of the earliest ones here in Massachusetts. And I just want to point out that these have been called by so many names. Tracing board, trestle board, Masonic chart, master's painting, master's carpet, whatever. You're going to find a number of these online if you do your research, what they are called, why they are called. Master's carpet is basically called this. Now, if you Google colonial Freemasonry, if you Google, say, early European Freemasonry, 1700s Freemasonry, uh, or search vehicles such as that during that period of time, and you hit the image button, you will come up with a bunch of images showing uh, colonial Freemasons, either here, France, or in England. It's hard to say where the engraving was made. But it does show a master sitting in the east. Sometimes it shows a candidate laying on the floor with the officers or members with drawn swords pointing to him. In another painting, or etching, or engraving, it shows what looks like to be a Masonic chart laying on the floor in front of the worshipful master. Now again, these are earlier period time colonial Freemasonry. Now, master's carpet. In Freemasonry, there is an imaginary line. Now, some of you may agree, some of you may disagree. Imaginary line that extends from the master's chair to the altar. That is his ultimate domain. You could see this in a long form opening of a New Hampshire Masonic Lodge whereby the marshal and the senior deacon during their work of the opening never cross the master's carpet. That is his domain. That is where he gives all of his all obligations, his lectures, and above all, his commands to his several officers. Master's carpet, if you look in that early engraving, you will notice that it's laying on the floor. This was not framed in its earliest days. More than likely, this piece looks like it was folded. Some of them were rolled. You'll see one in an upcoming episode at Cambridge, Massachusetts that was rolled. This one was folded. Those days, the Freemasons, as we are known, are taught or told, met in taverns, but they also met in other pub public buildings. Buildings that not only did the Freemasons use, but as well as the public. So everything Masonic had to be put away. So these were folded up, rolled away, rolled up, whatever. <clears throat> when the time came to be used, they would be laid out, opened up, rolled down, and placed in front of the master's office in the area that is known as the master's carpet, which is from the east to the altar. There, the master would then sit in his chair or stand and then give the lecture to the candidate who would probably be standing in this point here looking down on top of the carpet. Uh, and because it is called a carpet, it's laid on the floor. Master's carpet, because it's laid in front of the master, the master then gives his lecture from that point here in the east. Thus the name, the master's carpet. Right, Worship, do you have anything to add? I think you hit all the points. Thank you. Again, I want to thank you very much for viewing. Please watch our past episodes. Please watch for our upcoming episodes. Uh, hit us with the like uh, on, on YouTube, with Facebook, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.